Hello, and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the Algebra 1 concept of factoring trinomials. This is standard A.10e in the great state of Texas, and we are using item number 18 of the 2021 released STAR test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we need an expression, and we actually have a trinomial here, tri, because the prefix tri means three. So three terms in this expression, and it's lined up for us perfectly. We've got this ax squared plus bx plus c notation here. So we need to take the values of these coefficients here. So this a term, right, is going to be two. So let's just write this down here because we'll need this in just a moment. Now this b term is a 25, but really it's a negative 25 because we could call it a 2x squared plus negative 25 rather than minus 25. And the fact that it's negative makes a big difference. So negative 25, and then c is just that constant at the end, 63. Okay. All right, so let's use the diamond method here. It's not the only way to solve it, but it's a highly effective and efficient algorithm. In the top portion, we take our a term and our c term and we multiply them. So two times 63 is gonna be 126. And then my b term here is gonna be negative 25. Over on the left and right, we're gonna write ax over factor. So what we're doing is we're trying to find two factors that multiply to 126 and add to 25. So my a term is going to be 2x over something, 2x over something. We do that simply to try to simplify. So let's list out our 126s. Most of us don't have that memorized. Uh, the fact that I've got a positive product but a negative sum means that not just one, but both of my factors are gonna to have to be negative because I can add them both to get a negative, multiply them to get a positive, right? So, I mean, I'm not gonna start with two. Uh, let's start with three, just because uh, three and, we got a long ways to go, three and 42. Uh, four, nope, five, no, seven, no. Actually, 7, yes, yeah, it's 7 and 18. Oh, that's exactly what we need. Boy, we, we might have shot right past that. Let's see, 126 and 9. It's going to get us 14. And then that might be it. 12. Yep, that's it. Yeah, so we just have to start entering in combinations, and most things aren't divisible by 7, so you heard me say, well, probably not 7, but you know what? If you've got your calculator out, let's try it, because that's exactly what we need. So take a look. What we're doing is we're going to multiply both of these, negative 7 and negative 18. Right? We get positive 126. Then we're going to add negative 7 negative 18. That gets us our negative 25. All right. So those are the two factors we need. What we do is we write these two factors as denominators here. Now we're not going to leave them as a fraction. We're just doing this to see if there's any possible way to simplify. 2 and 7, no. 2 and negative 18, yes. Okay, so we're going to Divide both by 2, right? That's going to be 1, and that's going to be negative 9. So what we do now is we take each of these and we write them as a factor, okay? So our numerator is going to be the first term in the binomial. Negative 7 is going to turn into a minus 7. Now, we do the same thing over here, but instead of 2x, now it's just an x, and then minus 9. And if we want, right, we can... We can FOIL it out, so that's going to be 2x squared minus 18x minus 7x plus 126. Obviously, that turns into your minus 25x, so that gets us to exactly where we started. That's not 126, that's 63. And so our answer here is going to be G.